gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the wheels first, bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seeds are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is at the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, my rock, my redeemer. Amen. The wheat and the weeds parable. So this week we are on to the second parable that Jesus says to the crowds about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven the original words Basilia ton horonon, being one of the major themes in Gospel proclamation of Matthew. He uses this phrase, Kingdom of Heaven, 31 times in that small Gospel. The Kingdom of Heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seeds. And Jesus explains in parables of the sower of the seeds and their fruitfulness and how they can be compared to heaven. Yes, about fruitfulness. And last week we looked at the parable when a farmer joyfully sows the seeds and there were obstacles for some seeds to grow, depending on everything else. Some did not make it to the good soil, so they could not become fruitful. But those that made it to the good soil, they could all not be the same because there were some hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. However, the essential purpose of the seed is to be fruitful and multiply, to be purposeful. Jesus reminds us through this parable the kingdom of heaven is not a magical Disney kingdom. Not everything is not going to be like a la-la land, right? Because Jesus and the people were all partners who worked together. The seed and the soil take a natural course of action for this fruitfulness. And today again Jesus is comparing the kingdom of heaven to a sower who plants the good seeds. And they could be a different kind of an obstacle. A farmer who sowed some wheat seeds into his field, everything was going good. 
seeds sprouted crop looks beautiful the farmer is really joy filled until one day the laborers notice some other sprouts close look they are weeds at first they couldn't tell the difference between the wheat sprouts and the weeds but with a keen eye they notice the weeds and the laborers run to the landlord and ask him about the kind of seeds the owner perhaps used but the farmer confirms i am positive they were all good seeds but enemy has sown the bad seed in the field just like i asked gracie what question comes to your mind at once you would think why would someone do that and as grace has said who would do that can enemy who is so harmful can even exist who would do that more questions why didn't god stop that why didn't god catch that enemy why didn't god prevent that after all it's happening in the kingdom of heaven something like that should not happen but that is exactly how the kingdom of the world would react and therefore god wants us to understand that god and us are partners in this together god is necess- god is not necessarily the ruler <coughs> as a king of the kingdom would do in this world then the servants being eager to make it right asked the owner if they should go and pull out the weeds the master says no he tells them that they should just leave the fields alone at this point for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them let both of them grow together until the harvest and at the time of the harvest i will tell the reapers to collect the weeds first and bind them in the bundles to be burned but gather the wheat into my barn because those weeds have no purpose except to be just burned and put away they are not fruitful in any way they are not purpose purposeful a lot of time some actions of us can be like that too the weeds are carefully separated for good of the produce and jesus explained these parables to the disciples even more deeply and they asked in chapter 13 in the same chapter that we've read in verse 10 why do you speak to them in parables why can't you just tell them what it is and he says this is why i say to the, i speak to them in parables and he says those seeing they do not see though hearing they do not hear or understand so jesus offers them a perspective through the metaphors from their day to day lives from the things that they can relate to He wants them to understand the difference and the distinctiveness of the kingdom of heaven that is essentially different from the kingdom of what they have known and seen and understood. Jesus does not compare the kingdom of heaven to gold biscuits that run the bullion market. You would expect with certain kinds of this lavish stuff that Jesus would talk about but he talks to them about the seeds and the harvest and the fruitfulness that satisfy the hunger that is purposeful he says these things to them so they listen and understand so they see what they should actually see It seems there is this woman who arrives at an airport one night with several long hours before her flight. She looked for a book in the airport and shop and also bought a bag of crackers and found a comfortable place. 
She was engrossed in her book, enjoying her snack. But happened to see that the man sitting beside her, as bold as he could be, grabbed a cracker from the bag in between. She tried to ignore and wanted to avoid a scene. She lost her concentration to read, however, didn't give up. She munched the crackers and watched the clock as the gusty thief diminished all her stock. She was getting more and more irritated as the minutes ticked by, thinking, if I wasn't so nice, I would blacken his eye. With each one she took, he took one too. Now there is only one cracker left. She wondered, let me see what he would do. With a smile on his face and a nervous laugh, he took the last one, broke it in half, and offered to her he ate the other. She snatched it from him and thought, oh, brother. She had never known when she had been so annoyed. She sighed with relief when her flight was called. She gathered her stuff and headed to the gate, refusing to look back at the thief thieving in great. She boarded the plane and sank in her seat. Then she sought her book. As she reached in her baggage, she gasped with surprise. Ah, there was her bag of cookies in front of her eyes. If mine are here, she moaned in despair. The others were his, and he tried to share. How many times have we absolutely known that something was a certain way, that we were very sure, only to discover later what we believed to be is not true, was not true, no matter how many times we have heard the same thing over and again. We already have made up our mind. Sometimes our understanding is influenced by a lens, a perspective, a belief, a stereotype, something that we have previously believed, something that we have learned or known. Even after repeated reminders, we still look at it that way. Jesus is working hard to explain to them then and probably even today to us through these Gospels, through this text, what the kingdom of heaven is like and urges them to listen, to understand, as well as sometimes it takes to unlearn what we have already learned intentionally so we can see it from a new perspective. He tells them the parables and says, those with ears, listen. To listen is essential part of understanding. Jesus worries, though they see, they do not see. This happens a lot. When we don't listen, we tend to misunderstand, misread. And then our own understanding can block our view. So to begin with the wheat and weed, just as how they sound, wheat and weed, they could look alike. Easily one could be mistaken for the other. Similarly, wheat and weeds are there existing in our own lives, in our own societies. In our communities, they could look similar. They can be misleading. It may be even hard to notice the difference. The fields that we are, we tend to welcome both because our soil doesn't recognize. Our soil doesn't make a choice which one to grow. If the bad seeds are there, it still grows. And Jesus, cautions us about the existence of the weeds. Anything that brings harm and brokenness has no place in the kingdom of heaven. They need to be separated and the weeds and the bad crop must be burned away. 
Jesus speaks about this to the disciples and to the people about the what their role might be in the process of the kingdom of heaven. When we pray your kingdom come, we are partners in kingdom of heaven to happen. To eliminate evil, the harmfulness, the brokenness. And Jesus explains much more with the disciples of what it means. Jesus asks us to be the farmers of our own fields and call to produce a clean crop. I came across this beautiful poem and wish to share this with you. It is called Garden of Your Mind. Garden of Your Mind. What are you growing? in the garden of your mind. What do you water, nourish, feed? Do you plant seeds of forgiveness, of love? Or do you fertilize weeds of anger, resentment, fear? What are you growing in the garden of your heart? Do you allow sunshine to reach dark pain in the corners of your heart? Do you allow tears to wash it clean and nourish it? Or do you put up fences to keep out the feelings? Get on your knees, grow your own food, decide what is you want in your soil, know what you are cultivating, what you are growing. A lot can grow in the garden of your body if you let it seed. Nourish it, allow it, watch it grow. Garden of your mind, the soil of your body, it's in your hands. After Jesus shared this parable, he once again says, let anyone with ears listen. We are called to listen intentionally so we understand. May God bless these words. Amen.